Abraham, it is wonderful to be sitting right here. I had a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> and they've just all, I was thinking about my children. I have three kids. And I've been studying your material for quite a while. And I began with my oldest, she's 11. Her name is Ruth. And I began sharing with some of these, co-creating with her and appreciating my children. That's what I was thinking of while I was here, that exhilaration. I'm a performer, I'm a musician, I'm an auctioneer, I do a lot of sales and things like that. That gleeful, childlike bliss. What is a way, is it even possible to sustain that over a long period of time? I know, I believe that that is the force. I mean, that's... Well, this would be our objective. If we were a human parent, it would be our objective not necessarily to sustain it continuously, but for our children to understand what it feels like when it is happening, to know that they could get back to it. Because the creative process, step one is ask and life causes you to do that. Step two is source answers and the vortex is formed. We talked about that already. Step three is you get in the receptive mode. Step four is you are really good at being in the receptive mode. And that's that sustaining that you're talking about. But step five, such an important step, not being upset at yourself when you're back in step one, because that step one contrasting mode matters so much. So you don't want your children to take your word for anything because words don't teach, do they? Life experience is what teaches. And the reason that life experience teaches better than words is because there's more momentum in the actualization of something than there were in the beginning words. And so you don't want them to take your word for it, but you want to demonstrate through the clarity of your example, what alignment is. So your children will have a much greater probability of being those who find alignment because it's so natural. It's like the cork that floats on the surface of the water. That's natural. Holding it under the water is not natural to the cork. That's what negative emotion is. When you let go, it'll bob back up. That's what's natural. So it's natural for your children to bob back up into the receptive mode. Your children will have greater probability of bobbing and sustaining than children who are born into more difficult situations or born to those parents who don't have any understanding of emotion or vibration. But even knowing that, you do not want to deprive them in any way of the contrast that will fill their vortex. And there's a tendency to get so good at alignment and it feels so good to you that then you just want it for all those whom you love but you also want them to put things in their own vortex. Most parents don't get that. Most parents think, no, I have built a perfect vortex for my children. <laughs> I think I know what's best. I know what will make them happy. I know what's best. And so it's an understanding of the laws and the understanding of your own guidance system and then a demonstrating. In other words, let's say that you're in a bad mood for whatever reason, you're reacting to something, but you don't want to be a bad example to your children, so you pretend like you're not in a bad mood. Well, this is so confusing to them because they read energy and they're seeing a performance that just doesn't add up. You would be so much better to say to them, I'm in a rotten mood and I understand that it is of my own doing and if you will excuse me for a little while, I'm going to go off and stop facing the reality which largely includes you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to think of some things that bring me back into my natural, buoyant, happy state and then go away and do that. And when you return, be your authentic self be real in your happiness no they won't sustain it but they'll understand it and that's all that matters so would it be correct to say then that as a parent like the best example would be letting them see my joyful life or maybe see going through some of those step one or step five moments maintaining that joy yes
Yes, just let them witness you in alignment, not in alignment, and let them witness your conscious realization of which is which, and let them witness your determination to be in alignment, and let them witness you're not being very good at it sometimes, and let them witness seeing you better at it on some subjects than other, and let them witness you getting better at it on the subjects. Let them witness your freedom to choose, and let them witness the universe's response to your alignment. Let them witness the magic that seems to happen. It is magic but let them witness seeing what it's like to see a very deliberate person receive the benefit of being in alignment in a consistent basis one day Esther and friends were visiting and there were several generations of them Esther and her daughter and their children and other parents with their children and they were having a fun couple of days together and they were playing playing just playing laughing and having fun and sometimes in alignment and sometimes not it was all real and it was so good and everyone was getting higher and higher and higher in the experience of it and then everyone went their separate ways and Esther went off with her friend and they were having lunch together and Esther was talking about these children and how exhilarating it is to realize what they know what they've learned from their parents at such an early age and Esther was just milking the feeling of what that means as they move through life and how much pleasure and joy and success meaning joy that each of them has and Esther's friend looked at her across the table and said the most significant thing that anyone has ever said to Esther she said Esther that must be how our inner beings feel about us. Yes. Yes. And in that moment, the resonance of that truth just washed all over Esther. It was just compounded and compounded and compounded and compounded as Esther realized that everyone, all of us, Esther is thinking, have this vortex of source focused on us rooting for us, believing in us, never disappointed in us, never mad at us, never giving up on us, never wondering why we're not doing better, but just holding the absolute knowledge of our utter and absolute success. And so when you bring that into a closer view where your children can see it's demonstrated, in other words, now think about, oh, 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 oh think about this. You're really gonna like this. If you don't, it doesn't matter. We really, really <laughs> like this. So what we were talking about earlier, about how you want to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it, rather than find the essence of it. But think about what we're talking about here. Your children, in this case, of you being tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and demonstrating alignment on a really regular basis, they not only have the essence of all of that for themselves to access any time. They have a see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it version of the same in you. How about that? Don't you love beautiful. being that for your children? Yes. So now we have a question for you. Is your step one demonstration as valuable to your children as your step three demonstration? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. When you're in step one and you know it, and you let them know, hey, I'm having a contrasting moment and this is good because it's really clarifying something that I want and this is how things get into my vortex and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I like things in my vortex? And so I'm really appreciating this clarification because it's going to serve me so well. And then they get to watch you deliberately finding ways to line up with what you've put there. And then they get to witness the result of that. Then they understand hands in the clay creation. Then they're not thinking about luck or chance. Then they're not thinking about privilege. They're thinking about deliberate creation. They're thinking about how everyone is equal. They're thinking about how law of attraction is fair across the board. They're thinking about how everyone comes from source and everyone has an inner being and everyone has a vortex and everyone has source energy rooting for them. And everyone has this powerful now where they can converge with who they really are or not, where they can come into harmony or not. It makes life understandable your own and everyone you witness, doesn't it? Yes.
It's it's beautiful. Good. Yeah. I have a question. I was born in Colorado City, Arizona. I'm actually the nephew of a man that a lot of people may know, Warren Jeffs and the FLDS cult. It was a Mormon. Yeah, that. He's in jail. He's my uncle. And I want to know, I'm moving back into that community because I feel drawn back there to be there and to infuse it with some new life. And things are changing and things are, um, people are coming out of it. I understand the role that he played as far as the contrast goes, but I've seen that for some people it takes a long, long time for them to stop talking about the negative longer. or damning him longer. or whatever. Longer than your physical life has. So, yes. So my question is, how would you, Abraham, speak of him to another when that subject would come up? We wouldn't. Okay. Because, now, okay. this is a really important conversation. You understand, we know you do, of this receptive mode. Yes. So let's say that you are in the receptive mode and that you are interacting with a lot of different people. Most of you are interacting with a lot of different people who are in different receptive modes of their own. So let's say that you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and you are understanding source and life and creation and you're wanting to communicate it to someone that you care about because you're related to them. But they're not where you are because they've been in protest, they've been in defense, they've been reacting. And so they are not anywhere near where you are. But you have this feeling that you'd like everyone to feel what you feel and know what you know. And so you want to tell them. And so you say what you know, but they hear what they hear and they cannot hear what you know in the way that you know it. Yeah, okay. People say to Esther all the time, oh, the world is waiting for you and for Abraham. And so why don't you get yourself out there? Why don't you get a television show or why don't you? And Esther says, because I like law of attraction to do the work. I don't want to assert myself into an environment where those who are hearing can't hear because there is a misunderstanding which is what this man would like to say to everyone you misunderstand you misunderstand look at the way the world looks at that without having any first-hand experience about what any of that is you see Esther gets letters every day oh you are so brave and Esther says I am not brave at all I don't go where it's scary <laughs> Except for in the R8, right? Say again? Except for in the R8, right? Push the envelope. That's never scary. <laughs> she never goes beyond what she knows she can accomplish in alignment, you alignment. see. There are a lot of teachers in this room, like you, and there is often a feeling of wanting to return to your roots because there's a feeling of appreciation about being here and about what you have come from, you see. But we just want to leave you with a really strong idea to consider. And that is that once you get a hold of this understanding of how you create your own reality, sometimes you translate that personally to believe that that means that therefore I will go out where others are not in harmony and I will bring them to harmony. And that's not what law of attraction is about. Sometimes the perfect harmony is you going one way and them going another. Right. Because you did not come united with others in the attitude that there's strength in numbers. In fact, usually there's not strength in numbers, there is weakness in numbers. Because when you think about what we've been talking about all day here today, that your power is in your alignment. And if there are two of you, you are less likely to be in alignment than if it is just you. And if there are three, even more likely. You see what we're getting at? So we're not encouraging you to do or not to do anything. We just want you to understand that what you are feeling is the call of your inner being to who you have become.